No. Hello. I learned in Germany to always be punctual. So <laughs> here we are. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start with Vinny O'Connor. Jesse, good to see you. How are you settling in and how much are you looking forward to the job ahead? Yeah, um, I would say uh, the last week has been a bit of a whirlwind. Um, and I've, I've taken over enough uh, manager roles in, in enough places to know that in, in the first couple days, there can be a million things on your mind and that over time things slow down a bit and that you can start to uh, understand how you can help um, whatever team that you're going to be working with and get to know the club, the people, the, the players. Uh, so uh, I would say that the adaptation uh, process here has been incredibly smooth because the people are so amazing. Um, everything from working with Victor Orta and Angus Kinnear uh, to then what it's been like here at our training center, uh, working with all the people in the, around the team and then the players. Uh, I, honestly, it's... I've worked with some incredible teams uh, and, and good young men, and, and this group here is remarkable. So it gives me big hope that, that we can uh, adapt things quickly and, and that I can help them be successful. When you say this group is remarkable, what are you seeing? What kind of response? Because clearly they will notice a difference in the way you go about things to what's gone before. Yeah, I think, listen, in all moments, what will be uh, apparent with me is I will always be respectful of what has happened here in the past three and a half years because of the accomplishments that the club has had, because of the type of coach that, that Marcelo is. Um, you know, but I can say that I think, um, you know, even talking to Victor Orta, he felt like I was the right type of person to come here and take the, take over the team and help it make the next steps. And I think that um, my way of communicating and having relationships and and I can only speak about um, what it's been like with each individual and then what video sessions have been like and how attentive the team has been, um, how much they're eager to try to adapt and learn quickly obviously because we know we don't have a lot of time and, and that we have to find success quickly, but it's also, I think, um, so much more than that. It's about the character of the, of, of the players and it's about the character of the people here. So, um, yeah, again, that, that makes me optimistic. You also announced your backroom staff today as well. So, as a team, what will they bring to the club? Well, starting with uh, Frankie Schemer, um, we know each other really well. Um, he's very... Uh, connected with me in terms of what our philosophy is, what our playing style is, how to implement it day by day. So I think clearly that will be a big advantage. Cameron Toshak is the type of person who's very observant, um, understands how to inject himself the right way, understands um, the, the kind of tactics and ideas that we have behind our football and is a, is, has a good way of, of relating with people. And I can tell you that uh, it's only been two days I've worked with Mark Jackson, but it's like we've known each other for years. Jacko is an amazing guy. He's very flexible and adaptable. Uh, he, he reminded me, which I, I didn't know, that we had played against each other. So Leeds took a, um, a summer trip, I think, for preseason to America. And in 1997, yeah, a long time ago, uh, we, we apparently, he remembered that we played against each other. So um, I... Yeah, I asked him if I'd fouled him at any point because that was kind of my, I was good at that, but he, he said he couldn't remember that much. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, isn't yeah, it? You're not yes. remembered for the wrong reasons. <laughs> as a manager in a new league and a management team as well, what pressure is there to hit the ground running, particularly given the position the club finds itself in? Honestly, pressure is what you make of it. I understand that this is a big league and a big moment and that we have to find ways to get points, to get results, that this club deserves to be in the pr Premier League. I understand all those things. But if I focus on that, it doesn't help anybody or help me do the job. And that's my entire focus is exactly on what we can control and what's important for us to get us to where we think we deserve to be. So it's about the daily work. It's about investing in the process here. It's about investing in the people and in the players and helping them understand how they can be at their best. And, and I think a big part of my job right now is instilling confidence in the group that, that the way that I want to help this team move forward is the way that can help us get to where we want to be and how to, how to, how to communicate that every day. So, again, 
very positive start, but still still a lot of work to do. Easy for us to flag as well, but how do you go about making a team more solid that's conceded 20 goals well, in their last five leagues? Yeah, I mean, it's for me, it's it's um, it's a lot of things. It's not one thing. Uh, you know, uh, obviously a lot of teams had developed uh, match plans against the way that the team had played here that were starting to become uh, very successful and, and, and easier and easier to implement. Um, so, yeah, clearly we have to not, you know, it's not just saying that we needed to defend better. I mean, that's clear, but it's more about what are the tactics to try to um, manage the situation effectively so that, um, yeah, we can make sure that in all moments we're doing things as a group and making it as difficult as we can on opponents. And that, that includes not just the run of play, but but set pieces in, in all dead ball situations. So um, we'll, we've worked through... Um, and and so and then in the end to add to that you know of course I have a million things that I, I have on my mind that I that I want to implement but what's important for me I think is to understand how to make the simple things the clearest right now and then add complexity as we go on and, and getting that balance right where I'm not overloading the players um, but making it clear to them what's important and then allowing them on on match day to go out and be their best. Finally, for me, obviously, key players have been missing at various points of the season. Uh, have you got return dates for the likes of Phillips for Bamford? And how important could they be as the, as the season is? As end? Well, I can only tell you that Monday I came here and I met with the medical team and they, they introduced a whole uh, myriad of, of injury situations to me. And there's been a little bit of a cycle here where guys have been fighting through injuries and often playing with injuries. And it means that they've, they've sometimes then... Um, picked up other injuries and put themselves more in danger of missing minutes. And so um, what I need to do is, is, is help guys um, recover as quickly as possible, but not endanger them uh, and, and not overload them to, to put them in, in situations to, to, to further be in danger. Um, and then, yeah, make sure that, that we have a, a, a long-term vision in place for what that's going to mean. It's, it's, again, I said this before already, it's 12 games. It's not three games. It's not four games, right? And I know that we need points, but we need to make sure that we're getting stronger as we move along and not weaker. On that note, Patrick Bamford was in training today. Um, Calvin and Liam are both making progress. Uh, they won't be ready for the weekend, but but they're on the pitch. They're working every day. They're 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 getting closer and closer to being in team training. Um, and then we have a, a bunch of other guys who, who who have missed a little bit of training this week, and we're trying to evaluate what are the risk and rewards of all of the different players and how many minutes are appropriate for them to to be able to perform on on Saturday. Okay. Hi. Hi, welcome to Leeds. Thanks. Um, first, what was, now you're here, what was your initial assessment of what needed to be done first? And what is your remit over the next two and a half years? Yeah, I mean, clearly uh, the, the adjustment of tactics is number one. Um, and so making it clear to, to what our playing style is going to be moving forward and communicating that and then implementing it on the pitch every day, even so when not every player has been available. But like I said, the, the video, we've had video sessions every day and, and the, the attention span, the, the concentration, um, you can see there's excitement about the, the opportunity to try some new things. Um, and then the investment in the people, right? I mean, that's, if, you, if you talk about me as a, as a manager, that's, I think, what I care about the most. I, I love tactics and I love football, but, but I, I really love working with young men and helping them understand how to continue to improve and be the best version of themselves. So I've had a lot of individual conversations, have a lot of, have had a lot of conversations uh, in front of the group, and yeah, I think they're getting to understand me more and more every day. But this is a two and a half, a two and a half year project, it's not dependent on you staying in the Premier League. You're the man that they see take to the next level, and what level is that? Well, it, you're right. Um, I, I appreciate that the club was so convinced by me that they were willing to make a long-term commitment. When I was considering what my next options were, it wasn't about what was my biggest opportunity from a financial perspective. It wasn't about what was the biggest club I could possibly find to work with. It was about finding people that I felt like cared about the same things that I care about. And, and, 
I've felt that um, in the last weeks, months, talking to different people that had been associated with this club. And after being here for three days, which it's it's hard to believe that it's three or three and a half days, I can say that it's in, in a very difficult situation, it's been a joy. It's been a joy. Now, the project is three months, and then we have to start some processes now, but know that, you know, the real development process will start taking place a little bit more in summer that we build a foundation for what is important now. And again, focusing on what important now is more about making sure that game to game that we improve, that that we are, are clearer and clearer, and that we can fight uh, in every second and every moment for as many points as we can. Who stood out as a leader for you? There's been a bunch of great young men. Um, you know, speaking with uh, Liam Cooper and Luke Ayling, it's this is easy to see that that they are comfortable in front of the group, that they're uncomfortable in leadership roles. Um, I think Adam Forshaw has been also fantastic. Um, there's, you know, a guy like Patrick Bamford has a lot of personality. I want to challenge Calvin Phillips to take a bigger and bigger role within the team, and, and he's obviously so important, getting him healthy, but also getting him to take a bigger role in, t- in the team, I think will be massively important as well. Stuart Dallas for me is one of the hardest workers and, and strongest young men who is clear with himself and clear with how to work for the team every day. Um, Rodrigo, uh, an intelligent young man who wants to help in every way, <laughs> you know, and then there's a lot of positive energy in, in a lot of the young guys, and 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 my a lot of what I've done in my uh, managerial career is about managing young players and helping them achieve their highest potential. So there's a I have excitement in in the group and an excitement in being here. How difficult was it having the process accelerated to have you here and to literally walk into the shoes of a, a living legend? Yeah, I mean, um, I've said I said this. I think in one of the first interviews that I did, uh, I followed. I think le- living legends everywhere have been. Um, I think it, being secure with the fact that the predecessors did a lot of really good things. Well, uh, Marcelo, uh, you know, I think changed the mentality of the club and, and the team. Um, helped create a winning, successful mentality here. Understanding the things that he did well and how to stay true to some of those things. But then in the end, also know that I don't have to be Marcelo Bielsa. It's more important for me to be me and and me to provide what this team needs in order to continue to get better and to grow. So um, I've said already that I, f- I, I followed Marcelo's career. I've watched him closely. I've respected l- so many things that he's done. I've learned things from that he's done. But but clearly, I am I, I am different. I am my own person, and and I have my own ways. And and there again, the, it's important that they understand me and that they know what those things are, and that that they appreciate them. But in in the end, what's most important is that the team can appreciate each other and know how to go on the field and and do everything they can. So on Saturday, what will we see from Jesse? What will Jesse Marshall? Well, I, I think, you know, the the thing that I, I loved about this this team in the past is their fight, their their ability to run for each other, to do whatever it takes on the day, no matter what the result was. This will have to remain a big part of our DNA. Uh, but certainly then, um, you know, I think modifying our tactics, having a clear understanding of, of what we're trying to achieve, what our strategies are. Uh, the clarity to work as a group and not just in individuals in certain situations and transforming the, that, that tactical understanding and group mentality in, into something that will benefit us now and in the future. Those are the things that I think um, are important. But I think my ethos fit well with this club and this community here in Leeds, right? I, I mean, even where I'm from, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it reminds me a little bit of what Leeds is. I come from a hardworking family. My father worked in a factory for 32 years. I only know working hard and, and, and giving everything I have. That's all I know. So uh, I will do that here. I promise that. And, and we will make sure that when we step on the field that that's what we show. Last one for me, Jesse. We spoke to Mike Crowell, who played here, and obviously yeah. you, you know well since yeah. last night. And he said, um, do not play with fear. And that was the big message that you gave him. Will that be the motto here? Yes, always. Uh, I, I used to have an equation, Mike Grella would know this, fear to fail equals failure. And, 
and the way we play, our style of play is fearless. I think we have a, a lot of fearless young men here. Um, we have to tap into that fearlessness. It, it will help us in a situation like this. Um, the way we play is making mistakes is never a bad thing because we're aggressive to go win the ball back. We're aggressive to try to put our, uh, impose our will on the opponent at all times. Um, and then to, to help you know, educate the players and the team exactly what that means on every given day and how to use it to, as a strategy to be better than the opponent. That's what it is. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I miss Mike Grella. I miss another guy like Lloyd Sam. They were great players for me and great young men, and, and I've, I've been lucky to have a lot of uh, good connections with people like that. Thank you so much. Andy Hi Jesse, lovely to meet you. Uh, you've mentioned, I think, in a previous interview how you've, you've followed Leeds over the last couple of years or so, ever since you've been speaking of Victor Orta. I wonder then how you felt when you took the first steps as a manager over the threshold at Ellen Grove. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I understand what a big job it is, you know, I understand um, how important it is uh, to, to the fans, to the community here. Um, I, I, I followed football history for years, um, uh, and I've, you know, and then I, when Jack again reminded me that I've played against Leeds, like I, I, I'm very aware of what this is, um, and so I'm happy to be here. It all happened very fast, as much as we talk about. It. It's been a couple of years that I've I've been uh, following Leeds because of Victor. This all happened very, very fast, and I've had to wrap my my, my brain around exactly what it is and what it needs to be. And that's entirely my focus now. So clearly I'm emotional and I'm excited. Um, and I just want to, to channel that energy into things that can help the team. You talk about one of the first things you do, kind of working on the players' confidence, which I suppose is what comes with the run that Leeds have been on recently. How low was that confidence when you walked in through the door? I honestly didn't feel it because the young men are so um, energetic, positive, um, also united, like it's a it's a group that you can tell has already been through a lot. Um, and again, so then my focus is how to help them channel those energies to to make them better. Um, but it's a again, I know it's a big opportunity. I know that there are you know factions of people that may not uh, accept me so well because of their love for Marcelo, but in the end, you know, I just, I just want the team to show how good they are, right? And to show that as good as Marcelo is and was, that the team is good too and the players are good. And um, so that, that will be a lot of my focus is to help those guys really um, express themselves. You talk about Marcelo there, a lot's been made about the fact that you and him have similar sort of styles, certainly. I just wondered, does that allow you to make a quicker impact? Bearing in mind those similar stuff. Well, I mean, this is the reason I'm here, I think, right? I, I, I certainly didn't have the career, a coaching career, managerial career that Marcelo had before he came. But I think uh, anyone who is in charge of a sporting side of a club should do a really good job of trying to figure out what, in the end, are processes and succession plans for players, for for staff, for certainly for managers, so that... Um, the transition from one phase of a club to the next is as smooth as it can possibly be. And certainly then when I sit and talk with Victor at different moments and he explains to me the reasons why he believes I'm the right person, you can't help but be attracted to that kind of uh, analysis and also energy. So, um, yeah, I believe as well, it's the reason I'm here, um, is because I believe in many ways that I can be the right kind of fit and it can be the right kind of fit for me. Just looking at the relegation battle as a whole, how do you assess the relegation battle in the Premier League? How far up the Premier League table does it stretch, do you think? My focus is entirely on going from day to day. That's the, and that is the end point. Of course, do I watch the Leicester-Burnley game? I would like to tell you it was just to scout Leicester, but that's not true. Um, I'm very aware of the fact that other results can uh, impact what happens with us. But the most important thing for us is that we focus on the things that we can control and, and that we do the job ourselves. So, um, yeah, that's, that's entirely my focus. And just finally for me, just on Leicester this weekend, how tough a first test is this for you from what you've seen of them against Burnley, from what you've seen of them this season? 
First, I think Brendan Rodgers is a, is a very good coach. He's flexible, um, but also, I think, has a very clear playing style. Um, they have a ve- also a very good team uh, with Vardy back. I think that brings a boost to them. Uh, you know, let's see if he starts or not. I, I would expect that, given his performance on on Tuesday, that he would be he'd be a big option uh, from the start. Um, yeah, they're they're a team that plays well both with the ball and against the ball. We will have to have a very clear match plan and uh, and understand the ways that that they can uh, make it difficult for us. And we also need to be very clear on how we can be make it difficult for them. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a it's a very very difficult on uh, you know being being an away match a very difficult uh, first start. But whatever, fearlessness is what we've talked about. So we we better be in this moment. Thanks, yep. Great day. Well, Jesse, we know the team's been working at a certain intensity. New managers often want to up the intensity when they arrive. How do you view it here? Does this team need more intensity or a different intensity or less? Well, I mean, you know, when if you look at the the running data from the season, they're pretty much easily the most intensive team in the league. And for me, this week has been about not overloading them. Obviously, I know that a new manager comes in and they all want to make an immediate impression on the pitch that they all want to go uh, 100% all the time. So I'm, I'm very aware of that. I know that I have to manage the situation physically, mentally, emotionally in every way so that I give them the best chance to adapt and learn and grow into what I want them to become day by day. Uh, so, and, and I can tell you that effort is not, they don't need reinforcement on effort here. <laughs> These, these young men are hard workers. They give everything they have. Uh, and, it's, and again, it's b- about how to channel those efforts in the right way. You talked about myriad injury situations. Are any of those in danger of missing Saturday? Or the injuries they've been already managing and playing with? It's a little bit difficult to say. Um, you know, like, uh, so we've t- we'll evaluate Patrick. And how, what that means? Can he be on the bench? Does he need a little, a few more days? But he's close. I can tell you that he's close. Um, uh, Diego Oriente was not in training today, and he's questionable for the weekend. Obviously, with Liam and Calvin, we've already spoken. Um, and then a few, you know, there's a few others that we are just kind of going step by step and, and making sure that that we're not that we can prepare them as much as possible, but that we're not pushing too hard. Yeah. Baron. Hi, Jesse. Welcome to Leeds. Um, the under-23s and the way Marcelo approached that transition between those two groups and had them together it was a big part of his legacy. Here. How do you see that transition between the, the younger group and the older group, and how do you mesh them together? Yeah, listen, I, I, this is the fun for me, right, is when you're, when you're a manager of a, of a club, it's not just about managing the first team for me. It's about being a leader for the entire sporting side. Um, in the moment, when I talk about prioritizing what we need to do, that connection and everything is probably a little bit more on the back burner, but in a long-term process, it will be very clear that, that we have a good connection and that we have a good way of instructing the type of football that we need to have at the, at the first team level, um, and then what, what that's like to try to um, uh, develop that on a daily basis at all the different age groups and, and all the different levels. Um, but I will, you know, I, I will probably, I don't know exactly how Marcelo did everything. I've, I've had some communication and I know some of the things he did. He did a lot of really positive things. And the biggest thing was just the mentality to incorporate young players and to, to uh, invest in them. And, and clearly, whether you talk about the work that was done with, with us at, at Salzburg or at at New York, um, our connection with the academy uh, was a big benefit for the in, for everyone involved, and certainly for the first team manager. There's a lot of helpful stuff online with your tactical outlook, your formations you've used at previous mm-hmm. clubs, and the way you like to approach games. What are your early thoughts when you looked at this squad as a whole and the players you have at your disposal, particularly the wealth of wide options you've got? Yeah. Um, so. I think that, first of all, we have a lot of positional flexibility in the long term. I think that will help us adapt in games um, and adjust. Um, in, the me- in the short term, I want to try to give them clarity on principles and tactics and then clarity on strategies within the match of what we're trying to achieve. Um, so let's see. I mean, we ha- I- I've been working with one formation this week with them. I'm not going to say what that is. 
Uh, <laughs> however, I'm trying to step by step. Uh, I also had, you know, Lester in mind in the last uh, week and, and, and trying to think about how to put a process in place to help the players uh, adapt and, and what it would mean for this game. And then we'll have to go step by step through every game and, and, and again, uh, try to think about how to make complicated things as simple as possible so that the players can execute. Thank you. Stuart Reyna. Hi, Jesse. Um, you, you've talked about following living legends before and that sort of thing. I, I just wondered how important was the continuity of having Mark Jackson on the coaching staff? Yeah, I think he's been uh, vital. And, and it's not just about his experience, it's about the type of person he is. I, I mean, honestly, I've been really uh, lucky, feel lucky that Jacko is um, so willing and, and so committed. I mean, I think we were here last night until 9 p.m. or something and talking about tactics and adjustments and what they've done and done well and what we think needs to change and how we go forward. And uh, he's been fantastic. So certainly that connection... I can also tell you, uh, Rob Smith has is, is also been incredibly helpful, and in, in now um, uh, looking at how to, to deal with all of the, the physical situations and manage the players, that has been fantastic. Uh, everyone, everyone, and that's what you see is that the club is is so much more than than just one person. It's really a, a there's a lot of positive energy here, and people want to help as much as they possibly. Sorry, I said Rob Smith. I meant Rob Price. And that they've tried to help as much as they possibly can. And, and often when a new manager comes in, they'll see under 23 players that maybe haven't been used before who sort of leap out at them. Is there anyone in particular who's caught your eye from the younger group? Again, I'm just getting started, right? I mean, if you if you count Joffe as, a, as the younger group, then yeah, he's been good. Uh, I think... Crescencio's been good in the group. I think Charlie Cresswell comes every day and, and, and works really hard. You know, but again, I, I'm I know those player I know Joffe a little bit from watching um, some of the U twenty threes and then some of the first team matches, but but you know, I need to get to know these young players more and more so I can understand what their qualities are and then how to help them continue to grow. Sure. Thank you. Too. Yep. Bill Hay. Hi Jesse. Um, your last job was with a big club in a, a major European league. I, I wonder what that taught you with hindsight and whether it taught you to do anything different this time around. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the, the Leipzig situation was is difficult for me to explain to clearly. It was, on paper, the right move because it was inside of our company and, and in theory uh, uh, a similar type playing style but but then getting there and getting on the ground I could see that a lot had changed from a lot of perspectives and I had major concerns from the start on whether the things that I wanted to implement were going to work um, unfortunately those those uh, feelings uh, played themselves out but I, I was perfectly acceptable to say um, that that this wasn't going to work I should also say you know we had a corona where everyone was hurt. I was in quarantine. And before that time, we were in fifth place. We had just beaten Dortmund. Like it seemed like things were moving in a positive direction and it fell apart. What I learned from that, and this is why, why I applied to why I want to be here in Leeds, is that what's most important is the connection of people and, and the similar mindsets on, on what we want to be, how we want to communicate, how we want to work every day, how we want to play. That that connection among people inside of a club and with the community is what's most important. And again, this is what led me to here. Well, certainly getting away from uh, the, the man marking, um, trying to also, with the ball, create uh, tactics that don't expose us for transition moments as much. Uh, so, though, you know, the, the clarity of the tactical model um, without going, you know, uh, uh, so deep into every little detail. It's it's introducing important topics that I think uh, the players are, are and, and I can say it's an intelligent group that they are uh, that they can uh, um, understand and and put to practice. That has been uh, in the end. That has been what the focus has been this week. And then you know continuing to 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 for them to understand my personality and and how we're going to continue to move forward as a group. Um, yeah, that that's <laughs> these are 
these are the short term ta- challenges. But I, I told them yesterday after training that I the, some of the things that we did in training, I had worked with teams for six months and they didn't perform the the topics as well on the pitch as what what this group had done in in two days. So that's a very positive sign. Very positive sign. Thank you. Yep. Bye now. You talked about managing them mentally, physically, but also emotionally. How much of this week has been spent managing them emotionally because there was such a close bond with the field? Well, I think that um, we've seen incredible uh, positive responses in terms of the energy of the group, the positivity, uh, the excitement they have. Um, You know, of course, this was a very difficult decision for everyone to make. Um, there was big emotions on Monday when Marcelo and his team said goodbye. I, I, I was very aware of that the first time I spoke to them. I didn't want to go on Monday into a million things. I tried to just make a quick introduction of myself and who I am. And then I've tried to just be positive myself, bring energy every day, and, uh, and allow them to have some freedom to express themselves within the group and, and, and within their relationship with me. Um, you know, uh, even the energy on the pitch today is a, is a very positive sign. But again, it's got to add up so that when they when they go on the pitch on on Saturday, that that they're as committed, if not more, that they're that they're running for each other, that they're doing everything they can to fight for the result in the ways that they have, and and the the combination of of enjoying the process, but yet the discipline and concentration to execute on game day and go after the game in every way is what will be what will help us get to where we believe we deserve to be. And what would you have as a message to the fans who also obviously had that connection, but they love their club, they want you to Yeah, play. Yeah, I mean, in the end, I, I, I've heard a lot, I've seen, I've... I've seen a lot of people, you know, I'm not out in the community that much, but even at the, ho- I'm here at the hotel. <laughs> and the people I've seen at the hotel, they've all come up to me and say, listen, man, we want you to succeed. We want you to do well. Obviously, it was hard to say goodbye to Marcelo, but we love this club. We, you know, we're so happy to be in, be in the Premier League. You know, we're, we're behind you. Do everything you can. So, um my, my message is I'm here for all the right reasons. I'm not here for myself. I'm here for this club. I'm here to, to, to work within a, a club atmosphere to, to maximize the potential of everything we do every day. And I'm here to enjoy the process with the fans as well. Yeah, thanks. David. Uh, Jesse, do you feel there's a stigma around American coaches in English football? You joked this week about people might not, not like your accent and Bob Bradley had a hard time when he was there. How do you sort of battle against it? Yeah, I think there's probably a stigma. <laughs> I'm not sure Ted Lasso helped. Um, I haven't watched the show, but I get it. I get it. Like, people hate hearing the word soccer. They hate hearing, you know. I mean, I've used the word football since I was a, a football, professional football player. I think more and more in the States, we're adapting to what the game here is in England and our connection with with what this league is and what the culture of the sport is in this country. Um, you know, uh, I can understand that they don't think that we have the experiences that can be created here in Europe. Frankly, they're right, right? I mean, it, it was the reason I came to Europe. It was the reason I learned German. It was the reason I tried to adapt to new cultures. This is the fifth country I've coached football in. So. And it, it takes me out of my comfort zone every time. It challenges me to grow and develop and learn new things. Um, I'm very open to that. I'm very cognizant of the fact that I'm not perfect and I don't want to be. Um, and all I can say is the only way I know how to do things is to go all in, to give everything I have, to believe in who I am, to believe in the people that I work with, and to try to maximize what we are every day. And, and I find if you can do that effectively that you can be incredibly surprised with the human spirit and what you can achieve. So that sounds like Ted Lasso, I think, from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when, when a new manager comes in, you often see... Right, the, the work that goes right up and double sessions for every for, uh, for, for all players. Do you think what, what you're saying about the workload is there might be a, a deceleration in that and you know, possibly even, even the odd day off maybe? For- well, the, again, I, I don't think that working hard and, and, and like run performances in training or in games has been an issue. The key for me of, of 
changing some of these demands is that we still maintain and actually build upon what th that idea of what football is and what what character and what hard work for uh, for each other is. So that's the balance really is to is to create a different process in terms of how we relate with each other but maintain and build upon this intensity and and belief that that is what can make us different and what can make us good. Um, I've communicated that. I will continue to communicate that with the team that th I know that I'm not as intense in terms of the, the, the daily process as, as Marcelo is, but the key is that, that the performances on the pitch include that. And, and, and my, my, my goal is to access their, their, their spirit, their hearts, their minds more and more and more so that they can perform even bigger and better than what they have. Dave, I'm uh, Jesse, just just sort of clarify. Certainly, you're understanding that you know you, you'll be here long term, regardless of what happens at the end of the season. Well, um, in the process, Andrea asked me, "Would I would I come if if at the end of the season they were in the Premier League or in the Championship?" And I said, "If I felt that the 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 project was right, that absolutely it didn't matter." Um, and so when they came to me eight days ago, then it was time to show that I meant that. Um, yeah, of course I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want Marcelo to, to have to go out like, like this. I wanted to see him continue and finish his legacy and, and keep the team up. I wanted to make that argument with Victor when he called me. Right. But I could see that, that it, the group was suffering. Right, and so then I had to wrap my mind around doing it now, and um, my focus entirely is not on the championship; is on is on finding ways that that we will be in the Premier League. But but sorry. in the end, so, sorry James, so in the end, I'm I'm committed to 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 being here no matter no matter what the situation because I believe in it so much. Jesse. Um, have you spoken to the owner and Victor about retaining your, your best players this summer, regardless of what division you're in? If you look at Calvin and Rafinha, just how important is it that you do keep them? Yeah, I mean, listen, whenever you work for a club, you know that there's things that you can suggest and, and, and try to work through, but you also know that there are situations that you have to accept. Every manager would tell you, and I, and I say this in, in general, good players make good managers, not the other way around. <laughs> okay? So every manager would tell you that he would want as good of players as you can give him. But you also have to understand that for the health of the group and the health of every individual situation that um, you have to respect you know, possibilities of, of what is all out there. Um, I, I always, in those... I'm I'm a type of manager that I try to control what I think is in the in the boundaries of of what this role is, and and I try to work very diligently and carefully with the people around me. But I trust the people that are in their roles to do their jobs effectively. And I certainly know that with uh, someone like Victor Orta, that his expertise, his uh, communication style, his ability to to help build a roster uh, and a and a squad and 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 a club in a really good way is, is, is really impressive. So I have to, you know, I, we will have a really close, strong relationship as time goes on, but, but I certainly trust his way. There's no, there's no question about that. Hi, Jesse. Um, you mentioned your father. Um, what did your father do and what did you learn from him? And also, what did you learn from Ralph Ramey? Well? Yeah, my father is, his, my father's balance between hard work and enjoying his life as as good as anyone I've ever known. And I think that that's what I've learned the most from him is um, he was very clear to me when I was young what hard work was. <laughs> very clear. He, he worked in a tractor factory called Case, Case Tractors um, for 32 years and he worked on the assembly line. Um, but he was also a, an incredible hard worker. He was innovative. He did things like build houses, and he 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 accomplished. My parents got very uh, got married very very young because of me. Okay, so um, uh, my mother probably would not want that information out there, but that's, that's a little too late. 
Um, but, you know, I mean, so this, they, they fought for everything their whole lives to, to try to achieve and succeed, and they have. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's, I think my, my work-life balance has always been pretty good. Like, I know how to work really hard, but I also know how to enjoy the people around me. And, uh, and so, you know, we will do that here. I can, you know, the past three days have been fantastic. Um, and then Ralph Rangnick, yeah, I mean, he, he, he really introduced complex football tactics and ideas to me in a way that I think really um, ignited my, my passion for, for, for being a top, top manager. So um, very thankful for that relationship. Um, I'm also thankful that we're not playing them in the down the stretch, but yeah, I mean, he he sent me a little note. I was you know thankful and yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just the congratulations and and good luck and yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Three more. We go, Louise. Bro. Hi. Hi. With with your zonal marking, will this apply at set pieces as well as more generally? Yeah, I mean, we'll have set piece strategies too. Um, I understand that one of the strengths of the group is this idea of locking in on players at the right moments. And 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 listen, even if we want to talk about the way that I like to think about football, there are moments when we are in, in man marking phases and 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 man marking moments, and our ability to be aggressive and attack the opponent in those moments is 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 going to be really important for the adaptation to the way that I would like the team to play. Um, yeah, uh, and then we'll see what I'm not, I'm not, again. I'm not going to give away too much for what, what our set piece uh, program will be. And it's just getting a different balance because I mean, like last week, Stuart Dallas seemed to sort of switch on to Ryan Sessegnon to sort of man, man mark him when they change slightly. But in a way, in a way, he seemed to be doing too many jobs at once, and it kind of didn't work. Is that something? That... Well, I, you know, I've played against teams that are man marking uh, tact with man marking tactics and. And what we've always tried to do is create counter movements and play behind, right? And this is what this is now what you've seen. The strategy has been against, uh, for playing against Leeds in the last weeks. Um, obviously, the way we play, that won't be as simple. It won't be as easy, um, and we won't rely on just one player to follow uh, a one other player. It'll be more how we shift and, and adjust as a group, and 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 still then come down to defensive moments that 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 we can come up big. Ross. Hi Jesse, you said you played against Leeds 20 odd years ago and you've obviously followed the progress closely in the past couple of years. What do you see as the club's potential and obviously there's talk of 49 is potentially completing a full takeover at some point. What's your sort of take on Leeds United as a whole and the club's you know, potential? Well, um, yeah, I, I think knowing football history and what Leeds has been uh, in the past, I know that, and knowing this is a, a one-team city, and that the supporters are so big, not just here in Leeds, but internationally, um, I think that this club has incredible potential to continue to inch itself forward as a bigger and bigger uh, uh, club here in, in England. Now, you know, we're in a big moment right now, where we have to find a way to, to fight for everything, to stay in the top league, and then we can hopefully continue the process again as we as we continue to move forward. Um, I I, I want to make it clear that with the 49ers, they I, I met them. They're incredibly intelligent people. Um, they're very um, clear in terms of what has made them successful in terms of strategies and how to manage organizations. and And I think there's a lot to be learned from them, but. I also want to make it clear that that's not the main reason I'm here. And, and, and to say that there's an American, uh, Americanization of this club would be inaccurate. I think everyone from Andrea to Angus to, to Victor are very clear that the, the, they have a, a distinct vision for what this club is and will become and that the 49ers or me or the talk about American players or whatever, that, that this is sort of a side note in the, in the process. Um, but I, I will say, I, I think the balance overall from the conversations that have been had in the ownership group and in the leadership group within this club um, are very intelligent, uh, very careful, and I think will we'll make the club stronger and stronger as time, time goes on. That's all, Mark. Hi, good afternoon, Jesse. Hi. 
When you say that you were you wanted Marcelo to stay, you'd have liked to see him stay to the end of the season. Am I right in saying that you were ready to, to try and convince Victor that that would perhaps be the the, the best possible option? Yeah, I, I, again, I said that. I, I, I think I was ready to to say that. And and, and at the time, I, you know, if you go back even two weeks, I wasn't sure. I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I was definitely the next coach of Leeds United, next manager. Um, I had hoped that based on our conversations and, and our, our our positive exchanges that that was going to be a high possibility, but I wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, again, uh, you know. It, I know what it's like. Uh, you know, I just left the team halfway through the season, and it's never a good feeling, you know. And you, and you don't you don't want. I've learned in this business that you know jealousy is a terrible thing. Trying to judge people for failures and successes is never good. Finding the right fit and and being in a good situation where where you vibe with everything around you is often what determines success for a manager, right? And so again, I wanted. I, I wanted Marcelo to finish on a high note and, and the club to finish on a high note with Marcelo and the fans. And then, you know, if that was going to be a possibility for me to be the next, the next person to take over, then, then obviously I was going to be very open to what that idea would mean. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.